my creative friends. This is Heather North from heatherscreativeblessings.com and I am here with a cool technique to create a camouflage background using alcohol ink. The first thing you're going to want to do when working with alcohol inks is to protect your work surface. So I just have a piece of plastic template found in the quilting aisle. And then I have some photo paper. You could just use glossy paper, but every time I buy ink for my printer, I get these huge packs with hundreds of sheets of photo paper. So I'm going to use that. I'll be applying the alcohol inks with those felt pads you see stuck to the bottom of my distress tool. It's a Tim Holtz distress tool. One of our local stamping scrapbooking stores went out of business this summer. <laughs> I'm sad. But I got some great deals on all of their products that they were selling at 60 and 50 and 75% off before they closed. And that's where I got these alcohol inks. I thought at that price I should um, get them and give them a try. So you can see I'm using my... Um, pad that I had made the other cards with. You can use them over and over again. The ink comes out really fast so you don't even need to squeeze. I'm just tipping it upside down, touching it to the felt in different places. I've got some green and teal and um, brown, just different shades that I thought would go well with camouflage. And then I'm even adding in a couple of, I think that was like dark purple or blue and some burgundy. I wanted to make sure that the green really was the dominant color, so I came back in with a little more green in some spots. And then I'm just going to pounce it all over that glossy paper. From here you can get so many looks. I could stop right here and you would just see different spots of color which, with the white in the background. I think that looks really cool. But I want it to be a solid color, so I pounced some more, and then I started twisting that distress tool as I put color down. So I'd stamp and twist a little bit. When I noticed uh, that I did, wasn't getting a lot of color, I just added a few more drops of that green alcohol ink, and I filled in the white spaces. And here I start to rub even more, because like I said, I wanted the green to be the dominant color in this background. I'm going to use my Cricut to cut out some dog tags. This is tags, bags, boxes, and more. And I'm just looking through it for a tag with a rounded top that kind of reminds me of a dog tag. So you'll see right there, that's the one I'm gonna choose. I played with some scraps of paper to make sure I got the right size. And then I cut out some kind of a brushed gold bronze and silver and I cut out several pieces just to see which I would end up liking most for my card. I wanted to stamp the sentiment right on that dog tag, but um, it ended up being too dark to really see. I, the sentiment didn't stand out enough for me. So I'm gonna try something different. I've got this stamp set from Stampin' Up. It's called For Your Country. And I'm going to stamp with black stays on ink onto that tag. This is my first time using this stamp set, and when I get a new stamp set, I like to test it out just to make sure that it's going to give me full coverage on the stamping. So that's why I stamped off on the grid mat. Excuse my head. When I'm done stamping, I will stamp off on my grid mat to get rid of excess ink, and that way I don't have to clean my stamp and scrub quite so often. The paper pack I'm using is from Prima, I believe it's called Cartographer. It has these great background papers. I chose one of the lighter color backgrounds so that my sentiment would show through. And I'm going to use the Happy Birthday stamp from Honeycomb Hello. Any of the stamps in this stamp set would work. I stamped off just to make sure that the stamp gets good full coverage. It's another new stamp for me. And now I'm going to punch it out using my one inch circle punch. And by punching upside down, I can line up that sentiment exactly where I want it to punch out. Now I've got a one and quarter inch circle punch and I'm just going to punch out a basic black piece. My card base is going to be a piece of crumb cake, just your standard four and a quarter by five and a half card. Um, I've got a layer of black card stock that's four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then another piece of background paper from that cartographer pack, and that measures four by five and a quarter. And now I'm just taking my elements and seeing kind of where I want to place them on my card. I'll be adhering my layers with Stampin' Up's Fast Fuse. 
you pull it towards you and then flick it to the side to get the um, adhesive to release. I just layer it right in the center as best I can. And then again on the next piece, pull it towards you and flick with that fast fuse and line it up in the center of my card base. My dog tags are going to be popped up with dimensionals, but first I wanted to stick them together so that they have the correct angle um, and they wouldn't just flop down into one piece. So I just put some fast fuse on one side of my camouflage paper. And now I'm taking some thick black baker's twine from Pretty Pink Posh and I'm going to thread it through the top of the dog tag in those little holes. I'm going to use lots of Stampin' Dimensionals. These are from Stampin' Up! and it's a little foam tape. The reason I'm using so many is that I want it to have the same dimension all over the dog tags. So you don't need this much to make it stick to your card, but it's more about having an even layer across your card. I'm just going to use some fast views to adhere my circles to each other and then adhere them to the card base. I removed all the backings from my dimensionals and then stuck the card I mean the tag to the card and then I'll just trim off the little edges of my um, twine there so it doesn't hang down quite so long. Imagine Crafts sent me a box of inky goodies and one of the things that they sent me is this Pico embellisher. It's little bits of ink that have um, some dimension to it. So I just practice it make sure there's no air bubbles in the tip on that little piece of scrap paper and then I'm just going to add these little dots all along the bottom of my card. Set it aside to dry and when it dries it is a little bit shiny and a, just a little bit of dimension. My plan was to have three dots under the happy birthday that were just a little bit bigger than the other dots but it came out way too fast when I squeezed. Um, so then I tried making it spread out using the tip and it really wasn't spreading like I liked it to. So I grabbed a little wet wipe and I wiped it off and then I really liked the way it looked. It, it just went with that camouflage look to me. So I decided to leave it. Well, not only leave it, but add to it. I went back to that box for Imagine Crafts and grabbed another color from the Pico embellisher. Um, I think this is a gold and I dotted it and then I spread that around too so it's just a light um, light look to the background. This was a very happy mistake and I think I would like to play around with it some more and actually make a background just using this technique. Here's a close-up of my finished card so you can see the stamping details and the splatter. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you find some time today to get a little bit creative and try out this fun alcohol ink technique.